Welcome, everybody, to On Podcast, the On Microsoft Podcast, the one and only podcast for On Microsoft. That was on, 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 and on. <laughs> Nailed it five times. Got it. Um, I, my name is Kareem Anderson. I'm your co-host, and I'm joined with the world's greatest co-host. R.F. Bacchus. Yeah, we're here to, again today to talk about uh, Windows. Lots of Windows news uh, today and going into next week. So sit back and buckle up for lots of Windows. Uh, don't forget that we're also talking about Microsoft Viva 2 this week because it's Microsoft's latest platform. I know, yeah. This this is um, their add-ons to a bunch of stuff, but I mean, you'll be using Windows to get to it. So I'm going to bring it back <laughs> to Windows any way I can. <laughs> and speaking of Windows, uh, we're also talking about some rumored Windows and Xbox events that Microsoft could be planning this year. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, it seems like Microsoft has remembered that they have consumers that aren't <laughs> enterprise business people, people that are fans and enthusiasts. Uh, seems like they're going to be giving us a, a quick nod. Um, and then, you know, we do our famed special section that uh, Air likes to talk about all the time. The week ahead. Yes. And uh, this week ahead, we have some stuff that Microsoft is doing for Black History Month. So we'll just touch over some of those things. And then also, if you guys follow Windows Insider News carefully, you might realize that there was no dev channel build this week. So we're talking about insider program stuff and what we could expect for the next week ahead. Yeah, and then we have some follow-up news uh, based on um, two topics. One of them came in late uh, last week, which is a rumor about uh, Microsoft, I mean, uh, Apple's augmented reality, mixed reality, headsets and we just kind of want to gloss over how that could potentially be some competition for Microsoft finally in the area. Uh, then follow up with the uh, Microsoft Political Action Committee uh, drama that has been unfolding for the past two weeks and then go into a really fun part which uh, we'll, we'll let our kind of hint at before we fully go over it. Yeah so you guys a couple of weeks ago you might have noticed that we were promoting Aki's new uh, earbuds and also their USB-C hub but they reached out to us and they, they loved the feedback that we from our reviews and we're planning to give away two pairs of the Aki EPT31 earbuds. So keep your eyes. I love eyes. that name. It just like rolls out the tongue. Yeah, it's so natural. <laughs> so keep your eyes uh, peeled next week at on Microsoft for a giveaway and also on the podcast next week where we'll officially announce the winners. And with all that being said, let's jump into the fun stuff. The Windows 10X install tool of course you might have expected that this is like an official install tool but let's get it straight this is not officially from microsoft this is an unofficial windows 10x install tool because officially we don't know much about windows 10x because microsoft is not really discussing it we just know that it's rumored for new lightweight devices only for enterprise and commercial pcs I feel so, like Windows 10X is like a secret spy agent. Like, you disavow <laughs> it. Like, that's what Microsoft is ready to disavow Windows 10X at any moment. But uh, don't let that discourage you because uh, if you guys remember a couple episodes ago, we went hands on with a leaked version of Windows 10X for single screen PCs. And now that same, the community has been able to do a little, lo a lot of tweaking under the hood with that leaked image. And now they've made an unofficial installer, which lets you pretty much pull the drivers from any of your existing PCs and and pull 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 together what they call a full flash update package, which will let you create a USB installer for Windows 10X and install it on any PC you already own. I believe the person who did this, if I'm not mistaken, his Twitter his Twitter name is Albacore, or otherwise known as at the book is closed. He managed to create what he's calling a device image generator tool. And like I said earlier, the tool is used to install Windows 10X on an unsupported device by creating what's known as a full package, full flash update package. This helps solve the problem of when when there's not a universal installer for Windows 10X, like how there is one for regular Windows 10, because obviously the OS is not intended for anyone to install manually. And it pulls the drivers from your PC and puts them in an image and also a configuration package. But 
for people, it's not really intended for everyone to use. It's mainly for if you're a tweaker or someone who has a lot of experience with messing around in Windows 10. And there's no, with that said, there's no UUP files, which is what Windows uses to create like the ISO and the installation files. So you need to find those manually if you're planning to use Albacore's tool. But anyway, a lot of people did manage to get it working. I believe Zach at Windows Central had a video where he showed 10x running on a Surface Pro 6. And someone even managed to flash 10x on a Lumia 950. And someone was flashed it to run on a MacBook Pro. So even though Microsoft is not officially talking about Windows 10x, the community is really hyped up for it. And there are people out there who generally care for this operating system and are installing it on devices that Microsoft, I'm pretty sure, never intended to see them on. Yeah, bottom line is you can, if you're an enthusiast, have an extra device that you don't really care about, can flash this on there. And I'm going to just go ahead and say it. You can start selling Windows 10X and see <laughs> if that'll see if that'll push Microsoft to finally admit that they're working on it. Because if not, <laughs> you can sell yourself a new operating system for dirt cheap. I'm sure there are tens of people that would love to play around with Windows 10X. Uh, no, don't actually do that. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure that goes against the fine print in their software terms. Well, Again, if it doesn't exist, which Microsoft is, you know, <laughs> adamant about, you know, again, disavowing, what would end up happening is they'd have to come out and say, well, we do have Windows 10 X and we want you to cease and desist. At least we'd have confirmation at this point. <laughs> well, I, uh, personally, I try, like, tweaking with the tool to install it on one of those crappy old New Vision tablets from, like, yeah, 20, 2017, like, that's just sitting in my drawer as an insider piece. <laughs> yeah. It's so slow. I wish it were I wish they had used a different processor for that. Not I'm gonna say they don't need an up, up to up to date new one, but when it was going on sale for like fifty bucks during Christmas, it was already slow then. But I mean I love the thing that it's super thin, uh, had a decent screen. Um, it's lasted me this long so far for testing. So you still try it out. <laughs> Are you good? Hold on. Yeah, I think you're back. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. Yeah, uh, Teams glitched out on me there. Okay. Yeah, well, like I was saying, um, I tried to, to tweak a, a little bit and get the 10X running on the new vision, and it didn't work. But there are a lot of people out there who, who installed it on, on devices and are actively enjoying it, even though that Windows 10X doesn't support these uh, Win32 apps. Even though Windows X doesn't exist right now, <laughs> <laughs> we're working on it. But yeah, that's cool news. Um, again, I would just advise that if don't try this on your main machine. Um, if and if you do, back up, back up, back up, back up, and back up. Uh, with that being said, um, maybe Microsoft will officially announce something because it seems like, according to Tom Warren at The Verge. Um, yeah, uh, it seems like uh, according to Tom Warren at The Verge that Microsoft will be paying some fan service to uh, f uh, fans of Windows 10. Uh, it seems like Xbox gaming and some other uh, commercial uh, endeavors. Uh, the company could be planning other digital events focused on Windows gaming and other topics throughout the rest of the year. In addition to the company's annual conferences like Build or Inspire, uh, I think they just did uh, a second round of Ignite uh, last week or week before last. Uh, the Windows event should focus on Windows 10X and, and the big uh, design updates, codenames on Valley, that is expected to take uh, to make its debut uh, with 21H2 update for Windows 10 in the second half of 2021. So um, I think we got kind of a, a taste of this when Microsoft was doing their gaming per month when the, the on the lead up to uh, the Xbox uh, Series X and S rollouts. Uh, they were kind of, you know, setting the stage for being able to push digital uh, uh, conferences or diff uh, digital awarenesses uh, about their products. So um, it seems like, you know, again, now that we're into what will hopefully be the late stages of COVID uh, quarantine, that they are opting to um, speak to customers, speak to developers, speak to gamers uh, just a bit more throughout the year than they previously done where they've held you know, maybe two or three major events, uh, i.e. being Build, 
um, their October uh, party. Ignite, class. ignite, or inspire. And it, yeah, ignite and inspire. But now it seems like we're going to finally get some stuff about Windows that isn't uh, all based on the cloud, hopefully. <laughs> And stuff about gaming, which uh, again, hope, you know, maybe they have some more information about studios and things like that. Uh, in more detail, in a separate digital event dedicated to gaming, Microsoft could announce an expansion of Xbox Cloud Gaming, Project X Cloud, uh, which is kind of taking a hiatus on Android. Um, you know, maybe it's to retool and kind of uh, get their code synced up with what they're going to be doing on PC, because that should be coming down the pipe pretty soon. Um, I know that uh, we've all seen rumors about it kind of being. Um, retooled for Windows um, on uh, Windows on ARM, so that could be something that you know, hopefully they'll be announcing about. Uh, the cloud gaming service is expected to launch on Windows 10 PCs and iOS devices uh, via the web this year. Uh, and Xbox Phil Spencer previously mentioned in his in, uh, in his interest to bring Xbox Cloud Gaming to smart TVs as well. Um, so that'd be interesting to you know maybe just have an app on you know your Samsung where you can just launch X Cloud. Uh, with the possibility of Microsoft releasing its own streaming stick. And that could be huge as well. I've been playing with uh, Stadia and, you know, with the Chromecast, it's just made it pretty easy. So um, for those of us who were always kind of, you know, hoping Microsoft came up with a super slim Xbox, this is one way to do that. They, uh, already, so they already held one of these special events earlier this this week, too, of... Uh, which is what we'll get into next. Not not cutting you or anything, just yeah, just yeah. hinting at it. Um, they they had the V a special Microsoft 365 event where they unveiled Viva, which we'll talk about in the next segment. So it's like it kind of reminds me of what Apple has done with their events, where it's not just like one or two events throughout the year. They separate. To me, it seems like Microsoft is separating their their product categories into separate events to get back into the consumer space where they're showing people stuff that that they have, like a dedicated event for Windows, a dedicated event for Surface, a dedicated event for Xbox, and a dedicated event for Microsoft 365. So it's like they're putting their self out there and getting getting people more familiar, again, with their broader, broader product lineup. Now, with that being said, I think you and I were just talking about this off mic, is that it, while it's exciting for us and is enthusiast to kind of get more information, just hear some transparency and communication from the company, doing this does put them on the wire on for a deadline. I mean, you just yeah, can't announce, uh, we have Viva and it'll ship in 2022. Like, no one wants to, you know, sit through, you know, half an hour, however long the event is digitally, to then have at the very end say, oh, soon, coming soon. The reason why Apple's events work so well is because if they have an event about the iPad, within two or three months, the iPad's being sold. That exact right. thing that they were talking about. So uh, with Microsoft being more of a uh, software as a service company, uh, they're going to need to at least have the software be available. I mean, there's no point in talking about Sun Valley in March if we're not going to get Sun Valley until October, November at the earliest. We know how, uh, you know, two years ago, the October Act date, just now finished rolling out so <laughs> yeah, you know, months let's later. Hope, yeah let's hope that um you know i know that they've worked with teams and they've worked with like the nba and stuff like that to make sure that the streaming service is up to par that we're not going to be crashes during these events but whatever they're going to be talking about let's hope that that you know it's within the roadmap that's within a month or three from what they're talking about they've handled these events i mean i remember going to their last in-person event which was the Surface event in New York City back in 2019. That was like their their very last event, and then COVID hit with like a year later or a couple months later. And normally the these media events are are done obviously in person where you could play with the hardware. But what they've been doing recently is they hold the events for the media behind closed doors, and we get the embargoed information, and then we publish our posts, and then you guys see it. And then like an hour or two after embargo lifts, you're able to experience the same thing we experienced on YouTube uh, on the Surface channel. I believe they did this with the Surface Duo. So Microsoft has been playing around with, with ways to get consumers back in so they experience their products, to, especially during now with COVID and the limitations of them canceling all in-person events. 
Yeah, it's good. I mean, again, we were talking about this earlier, is that it's probably, I mean, I would imagine that it's saving them a ton of money from having to book and, you know, send out press swag and send out invitations and all of these other things that come along with in-person events. I mean, I pray that they come back because I just love going to them and I love meeting with, uh, you know, not only the Microsoft uh, executives, but with a fellow journalist to kind of, you know, share and exchange ideas. Uh, I do miss that, but I'm sure they're looking at their books this year and going like, hey, we can host seven to 12 <laughs> different digital events and it'd be half the price of, you know, booking for Ignite or booking for Build. So uh, let's hope, you know, that they don't stick with this going, you know, once the, once the uh, pandemic has kind of passed us a little bit. The one thing I miss from these events is getting free swag, like this, uh, this magic it. hat. You'll get like cute, cool stickers and hats. And I am, and I am looking at my water bottles, my coffee mugs, my stickers, all this stuff, and I'm like, I, I would like to have a little bit more. I like well, that new stuff, but you know, that's a, it's privilege. Uh, so I will admit that, but I, I do hope that stuff comes back. But anyway, speaking of new, uh, uh, we also got uh, something new from Microsoft this this week. Well, technically last week now, which is Microsoft Viva. They are calling it their new employee experience platform, which is integrated in Microsoft Teams. Now, let me pause there for a minute. You guys know that Microsoft is always about creating new things. They created the Surface lineup to solve the problem of having a portable computer and taking, taking your laptop everywhere and bringing inking and touching to laptops. So with Viva, I'm just trying to do a comparison here to make it simple. Everyone is working from home and being working from home has a lot of problems. You're just, you feel a little bit disconnected from your coworkers. You're, you don't know how to manage your time. You can't do company bonding. It's hard for managers to like focus on, on their employees and you miss a lot of the in-person stuff. So Viva is a new platform which basically is trying to solve all these problems of working from home and the new digital era of working from home. So it's an, like I said, it's a new experience platform that leverages Teams and other Microsoft 365 service to help employees learn and grow. Um, it launched on February 4th and most of the parts of Viva are built into Microsoft Teams and they depend on SharePoint and Yammer and a lot of the other Microsoft 365 services. But right now, Viva has four main parts. There's Viva Topics, Viva Insights, Viva Learning, and Viva Connections. And all four of these, Microsoft is calling them modules, have their own goals of helping employees and helping companies solve problems that come with working from home. So um, I'll divide it up and I'll talk about insights and topics and I'll let you get into learning and connections. So first up, there's Viva Insights, which is the first module for Viva. And it's launching in public preview on February 4th and it has a dedicated app in Teams. And this app is dedicated to help employees stay in touch with colleagues and with each other and to be more productive at work and to take breaks and focus on work. I believe a couple of months ago, they announced the Headspace and the digital commute function in Teams. So these two things will integrate with insights on the employee side. And then next up is Viva Topics, which is now generally available as an add-on to Microsoft 365 commercial plans. And this is what Jared Spataro described as the Wikipedia with AI superpowers for your organization. So basically, this thing is able to leverage everything from across Microsoft 365 and from across your organization, as, as well as third-party services like Salesforce and ServiceNow, and give you like a hub for a way to find find certain le company lingo and cer certain company topics and, and just get yourself up to date with it. And now, if you're tired of hearing me talk about this, I'll let Kareem get into Viva Learning. Yeah, I'm going to get into Viva Learning just in one second because I feel like that needs, I want to really kind of delve <laughs> into that one. So I'm going to jump into Connections first, uh, which is uh, 
basically what it sounds like. It's the fourth module uh, that will launch in a public preview on the desktop in the first half of 2021. 20, uh, we don't know what that means. So it could be anywhere between now and <laughs> the summer. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, and it will have a mobile counterpart. Uh, so you'll be able to probably get this on Android, I'm assuming first, and iOS to follow, or, you know, iOS first, Android later. It's weird how they kind of do that development. Um, but as, uh, again, Spataro described, Viva Connections is a gateway to your digital workplace uh, with the app acting as a curated portal, providing access to relevant news, conversations, and other resources from SharePoint and Yammer. So um, this would probably be your on the go um, interface for uh, keeping up with. Um, you know, just communications back and forth, just an easier way to kind of look at this in a broad overview versus having to dive straight into Teams, straight into your specific chats or whatnot, and kind of an overview over, uh, you know, emails, um, notes taken, uh, pre presentations and feedback between all that stuff. Uh, so that's what connection seems to be about. And, um, you know, obviously when we get our hands on it and be able to kind of play with it, we'll be able to give you a little more detail on that. The third module, or fourth now that I'm just <laughs> describing, is uh, Viva Learning, which, is, like I said, I think is pretty important um, for Microsoft. Uh, what it is, is uh, it's in private preview uh, right now, or starting, I guess, last week. Uh, the app can bring together all learning resources from a company's uh, content library, as well as content from Microsoft Learn, LinkedIn Learning, and third-party providers, including Skillsoft, Coursera, uh, Plural site and uh, EDX. So, um, I was hoping this would be, you know, Microsoft's answer to Google's like education platform as far as a rebuff. But it seems more like the enterprise version of that. So maybe uh, they'll take the knowledge that they get from this and scale it down to education. But it seems like it's going to be a really cool way to get employers to help um, employees with additional training. Um, with certifications, all of the things that you know you might have had to either pay or do separately out of work out of work time, you'll be able to kind of uh, coalesce all that stuff into uh, this Teams interface. Basically, it seems like with all of these modules and what Microsoft is doing is uh, they're making Teams the front end to yeah this vast workplace uh, resource. Um, again, I don't know how that's going to fit with people who already think Teams is bloated, but for anybody who's looking to streamline, uh, it's it, th these modules uh, are really beefing up uh, what you can do with Teams and what you can do uh, with Microsoft 365. Again, I'm looking forward to seeing how learning works, especially with the uh, LinkedIn learning stuff, uh, Coursera as well, um, because the way the interface looks, it looks pretty sleek. So I want to see how, you know, if I have um, a certain amount of courses already done for uh, a thing, do they gamify that? Is there a percentage of it? Will my employer see that? Will they see that I'm slacking and you know, <laughs> finish getting certified within this period of timeline? Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's one of their cooler things on in the entire thing, at least as far as consumers are facing. Um, I hope mm -hmm. they, again, I hope they bring this kind of stuff to uh, the average Joe version of Teams, if this ever becomes something, where I can go in and kind of prioritize uh, my my learning, uh, my future education and things like that uh, on Teams. Did you see, like, did you expect them to unveil this? Because I remember writing the post for the Microsoft 365 tweet where you're like, oh, come experience new this or new that. I'm like, hey, maybe it's just about Teams. But like I said, when we kicked off the segment, Microsoft is, is known to revolutionize things. Like uh, they pulled the twin one category out of the bag and no one expected them to do surface or surface book or anything like that and now they just pulled this out of the bag out of nowhere and they're like hey we're creating a new employee experience platform because everything is so fragmented and companies need to depend on a million different apps just to check up on their employees so this is something that really even though you can consider it boring quote unquote it's something that still really excited me because it's really great to see Microsoft doing new things and taking taking this risk and coming up with a new employee experience platform, even if it just depends on Team and the rest of Microsoft 365. Well, I think this is, um, again, I don't know who to credit for this entire project or who spearheaded this. And I'm sure it's not just one individual, so I don't want to discredit all of you people who worked on this. But the vision for this 
um, seems like it was an inevitability. I and mean, while we're all kind of being flung <laughs> on Windows 10X news, while we're all scouring for that, <laughs> right. this and came out of left field with, which is great. But, it, you know, in all honesty, they took all the stuff, all of the things that they have, all the desperate uh, apps and platforms, and figured out a way to finally make them make sense. They, you know, we always complain about how Microsoft doubles and triples up on certain things. They have overlap. You know, we have Skype and Teams. We have um, SharePoint and uh, Link. Or, you know, they we have all of these different things that kind of sort of do some of the same things as as, as each other. And I feel like this platform is a step in getting rid of all of that, you know, you know, putting it into one thing. So like you said, you know, they're revolutionizing, but they're also just kind of making sense. You know, it seems like a no brainer for a company in this position. And I feel like they may be one of very few that can be able to pull this off because they have so much enterprise knowledge and investment in this and so many platforms that people are already using and they have the telemetry to kind of put this all together. I know Google would love to do something like this and they have a few separate apps that could sort of kind of do some of this stuff, but not to the degree that Microsoft's about to like pull off with this thing. This is something that only Microsoft could do, would you say so? Yeah, I would say so as of right now. I know Salesforce is, is rapidly trying to follow suit with this, so I don't want to discredit them as well. I know that they have some... Uh, very good platforms uh, on their own. Uh, I don't know if they work as well together as Microsoft uh, so far, but again, if you're a Microsoft uh, Dynamics user or whatnot, this is only going to add to that. So uh, we'll see going forward uh, how many other companies can say, hey, we have a Viva competitor. <laughs> That's true. And you sp uh, mentioned going forward, which means it's time for the week ahead. We're going forward, everybody. Yes, we're <laughs> talking about it is Black History Month, and it seems like Microsoft's acknowledging that. Um, they're celebrating Black History Month in the U.S. Uh, with the company creating the, the Legacy Project, a curated virtual museum highlighting black uh, change makers and their contributions to modern-day America. The virtual Legacy museum features several prominent black personalities, including Cynthia Marshall, the first female uh, CEO of the NBA, Armani Johnson, the youngest elected official in Southfield, Michigan, uh, who has made history, and Microsoft is also inviting students to participate in a series of virtual tours of 13 national museums and cultural institutions, including the Graham Museum and the, and the Freedom Rides Museum, uh, which is pretty important uh, part of U.S. history, for those of you uh, not in the U.S. The immersive experience will allow students to go back in time and walk virtually with Martin Luther King or see the exploits of black sports personalities such as Jackie Robinson and Muhammad Ali. So, um, <clears throat> In the wake of COVID, um, we're going to be hearing a lot of virtual uh, acknowledgments, participations, and efforts. Uh, just seems like Microsoft is, you know, coming out of uh, the woodwork with their own versions of these things. So, for those of you who are Microsoft fans, those of you who are interested in Black History Month, or just uh, Black personalities and and uh, achievers, uh, we'll have some more information about that. Uh, so, just you know, follow our website, and, and we'll link to. All the information as it rolls out for the month and this entire thing is a virtual experience like a website that you could go to and click through different exhibits as if you were in an actual museum which i'm pretty sure is something no one has done in probably months now because of COVID. so microsoft is trying to bring the greatness of black history right into your own living room yeah i mean what i'm hoping is that we can talk to somebody maybe we'll have to reach out on twitter uh do that maybe this weekend and find out if they're going to bring it to their mixed reality headsets because you could Badge for this with that, you could oh, literally yeah. Windows Mixed Reality and HoloLens. Yeah, it would be so cool. I think so. I mean, well, even with your uh, this is a Samsung, right? That you have, yeah, the HMV Odyssey. Yeah, I mean, that would be amazing to be in a museum and you know, in that frame and kind of see this kind of stuff. So, uh, we'll see if they'll be bringing it to their mixed reality uh, platform as well. Speaking of bringing it, uh, something that Microsoft did not bring to us last week was uh, oh, insider. Bird, <laughs> they, they did not deliver to us a new insider build uh, from the dev channel last week because it apparently did not pass their quality gates, so they did not fly anything to us. So I'm wondering if maybe if it didn't pass their quality test, maybe it could have been like a big build or something with a new feature maybe. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe we should keep our eyes peeled next week for maybe something big from the insider program. 
Yeah, it's interesting that uh, we, we talked about how Microsoft, quote unquote, uh, told us they didn't pass their internal uh, uh, inspection. But this was also tweeted out from like where just the Windows dev team. Like we used to have a face, like someone we could attribute this news to. And I feel like for the last, I don't know, eight eight months to a year, like it's been nobody. But uh, you know, it's you know, I'm I'm gonna keep an eye out. I'm hoping that we again we see either one or two things in the next few builds, which is more Windows 10X features coming in or Sun Valley stuff. Like we need to see one of two in the next few months because this is getting ridiculous that we keep hearing and seeing you know rumors about this meanwhile insiders are getting like bug fixes which you mean <laughs> i love the bugs fixes but bug fixes and other stuff would be nice so what is nice apparently is that apple is working on an augmented reality headset and i know you like to like give apple shade because we that's what we do here at on microsoft that's uh, what we do. So I'm opening the floor for your shade in the week ahead segment. Yeah, I'll make it quick. Um, it was a rumor um, that was picked up by the, the, information, the information magazine. Um, picked up a piece about uh, Apple's new or secretive mixed reality headset. Um, it seems like, you know, as everyone kind of pictured Apple bringing out these sleek new AR sunglasses, that they're actually going to do more of the Microsoft Google route of, Experiment with the mixed reality and a bulkier headset up front. Uh, the, you know, they're talking about 8K resolution and they're talking about swappable head straps or headbands that would fu- have different functionalities as far as like spatial audio or increased battery, uh, increased battery performance, things like that. Uh, you know, someone sketched out based off the description what it would look like. It looks a lot like Google's Daydream. Um, all of that stuff's great. Uh, I think the most, the two more important things pulled from you know this rumor. A lot of rumor. Uh, lots of rumors uh, is that it's going to cost upwards of three thousand dollars, so it's falling mm-hmm. to hollow lens. So, we're, you know, people were kind of concerned or interested in how it would undercut hollow lens. It's not going to from this point. And the second thing is, it's going after enterprise, uh, which is huge because you know normally Microsoft, I mean Apple, doesn't aim for enterprise. They, you know, trickle up to enterprise. You know, they'll they'll come out with the consumer thing, and most people. Most enterprise people are consumers themselves, so they'll say, like, hey, I want the new MacBook, but I want it to work for me at work. Uh, this is a, as a direct targeted enterprise. Um, I wrote about this uh, going into the weekend. We'll keep an eye on it. We just want to, you know, obviously see how this shapes up and, and um, if Microsoft will have an, an official competitor in this space. You know, we all thought Magic Leap was going to be it, but we're waiting to see how they rebuild themselves and uh, come back uh, eventually. So yeah, keeping an eye on the, a- the mixed reality headset, not AR, mixed reality, which is the device is primarily VR with a few additional um, cameras on the outside to kind of give a, a bit of uh, AR for some people. And then something about uh, micro- this political controversy that Microsoft has been in, uh, you have some updates on that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been talking about this for the last three weeks. Uh, the Microsoft Political Action Committee um, has been suspended uh and now reinstated um frank shaw finally uh communicated this i believe late friday talking about what microsoft is going to do going forward with it we have a post about this uh the overview is basically they had about six days of constant meetings with the three three thousand plus employees and family members who participate in the political action committee uh with their donations and funds and contributions and they decided that they are going to suspend uh, contributions, donations for the f- full remainder of this year for uh, anybody who uh, had any parts or any uh, participation with the uh, capital riots. Uh, they're also going to offer a third option instead of, you know, you don't necessarily have to put contributions for a Republican or Democrat uh, representative. You can just put it into what they believe they're calling their democracy uh, initiative. Uh, and that's basically like a project that pushes more about bills and, and legislation than it does about specific individuals uh, uh, or, or campaign uh, financing. So uh, they've, again, they've talked about it to people. They've um, met with a bunch of people. They've decided to change. They've also changed the name so that it's more... Uh, transparent about who's participating in it so it's got a, a bit of a longer acronym um and 
yeah, it seems you know, it seems like they took to heart um, what a lot of people have been giving criticism over, and they kind of redone um, the strategy going forward. Um, there will also be more details, they said, coming out about uh, what's going to happen after 2021 and going forward with their contributions uh, and how they're going to um, let investors, family members, and employees know uh, where that money's going. So, again, it's all, the, yeah, go ahead. It's always good to hear Microsoft listening to feedback from employees and the press in general. Yeah, uh, and especially uh, working as quickly as they did. Uh, yeah. This could have been a, a very long, drug out uh, controversy, but again, they, within, I think, three weeks, three and a half weeks or so, figured out what to do. And it seems to be a huge step in the right direction, but I mean, with not only Microsoft, but other big companies like Facebook, Amazon, maybe IBM, for some other people as well. Um, going forward, it's, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how these companies pull back on lobbying and put their efforts into something else. Uh, and I think that was the last topic on our list, unless you have anything to add. Nope, that was that was me rambling towards the end of this. <laughs> so if you stay tuned long enough to hear us rambling and talking about Microsoft, we do have a little treat for you, like we teased at the top of the show. Uh, we are doing a giveaway with our partners at Aki. Uh, this next week for next week's episode. So if you read us at on Microsoft, be sure to stay tuned to our website and check out our giveaway post where we'll describe the, the new Aki EPT31 earbuds. And again, it just rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> yep, which it's available on Amazon for $40, by the way. And these are like AirPods competitors that are there that are not $200 that have some very nice audio quality. So uh, two lucky readers will be able to get one for free. Uh, we're running a giveaway. So be sure to stay tuned to us next week and watch us next week too so you can have your chance to win one. And hear these voices in your ears at all times. <laughs> yeah, be sure to, to put them in your ears and tune into us on SoundCloud and Spotify and YouTube and all our other platforms. Basically, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that, that's all I have to add, and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, open the floor for you and your final words. Yeah, no, um, it's gonna be you know uh, a busy week, a uh, busy couple of months going ahead. You know everything's getting back in full swing. Microsoft employees are coming back off their vacations, so we expect to see you know even more news, and even more information come about. Uh, we'll also be uh, want to say that I'm coming up with a piece uh, about Amazon in a transition as well, because uh, it feels like it's a lot like Microsoft's where they let the personality kind of go off to the side and now they're letting their cloud guy take part. So we'll see if Amazon Satya Nadella can do um, what Satya's <laughs> done for Microsoft. Uh, uh, AWS is going to be the new Azure sooner well, than later. That's what I'm worried about is that if, if Jeff Bezos wasn't as concerned with AWS and this guy like basically built AWS and they're already ahead of Microsoft, what does this mean? <laughs> well, so I guess cool. we'll have to we'll have to stay tuned to find out. Yeah, that's my only little bit of uh, uh, tag on it very good. Other than that, uh, again, just follow us on Twitter. Uh, I'm at Mindhead One, the only I am, one, and I am a back germ. And we want everyone to stay safe. Uh, see you again next week. Thank you for watching, and see you again, same place, same time. <laughs>